Hello, in this video we're going to talk about conditional probabilities. To demonstrate pretty much the idea that is going to go on in this video, consider this following scenario. Uh, suppose that there is some likelihood of buying or an umbrella being bought at a store. And I'm going to call it the probability of U. If it is raining outside, you would assume that the likelihood would increase. So I'm going to call the event, it is raining, I'm going to call this R. And of course the likelihood of it raining is going to have an additional probability associated with it. So if that is the case, then that means U depends on R. And how do we know that it depends? Well that goes through a whole entire scientific process, right? But if it depends, then that means what? That means the probability of U will increase. Now, it may decrease for whatever reason. It depends on the scenario, of course. So that means this no longer is the probability of interest, right? So this is where we introduce what we call a conditional probability. So it will increase to another probability, and I'm going to write it as probability of U bar R. So this is the probability of U, the probability of buying an umbrella or having an umbrella bought in the store, assuming that R has occurred. And this is what we call a conditional probability because that there's, there is a condition that is assumed to be already ex in existence when taken into consideration the probability of U. All right, so how do we sort of understand this, right? So consider this example. What is the probability of rolling a sum of five? So we're gonna consider two six-sided die being rolled, and we're going to assume one of the dice is equal to 4. So assuming one of the dice is equal to 4, this has already happened. So that means what? That means the sample space is the set of all values that have already occurred that already have a 4 in them. So that means we have 1, 4, 2, 4, 3, 4, 4, 4, 5, 4, 6, 4, and that's all. So therefore what? What is the probability of rolling a sum of 5, assuming that this has already occurred? Ah, but there is also some other values, right? Because you could have a 4 on the first die as well. So this could be 4, 1. This could be 4, 2. This could be 4, 3. You could have also 4, 5, and you could also have 4, 6. And remember, you cannot count 4, 4 at the same exact time. So how many values do we have in the sample space now? So the sample space is going to be 6 plus 5, so that's going to be equal to 11. All right, so what's the probability of rolling a sum of 5? So rolling a sum of 5 is going to be equal to 1 plus 4, uh, 4 plus 1, how else can we get 5? See, 2 plus 4 is going to be 6, 3 plus 4 is 7, 4 plus 4 is 8, 5, 4 is 9, and 6, 4 is 10. So that's it, right? So if we call the event A to be equal to what? So the probability of rolling a sum of 5, sum of 5, so that means the size of A is going to be equal to 2. 
that means the probability of A, assuming S has already occurred, is going to be equal to 2 divided by 11, which is about equal to 0 0.1818. All right, so let us think about this from a different perspective. So these are all the values that you can get a value of 4, right? So I'm going to consider it B. So B is equal to the event they get 1, 4 on a die. So get 1, 4 on a die, or dice, or whatever you want to call it, right? And we've already found that the size of B is equal to 11. And A, of course. So what is A? A is equal to a sum of 5. So let us assume that A is going to come from the big sample space. So how can we get a sum of 5 in the general category? So a sum of 5 can be 1, 4, 2, 3, 3, 2, 4, 1. That's the only possible way here. So how can we get the same exact answer if we don't redefine our sample space? So what is in common with B and A? Well, B and A, the only way you can get B and A is if you have 1 and 4 and 4 and 1. So therefore, if we restrict A to B, then that means this right here is the intersection of A and B and B is the sample space of definition. Therefore, the probability of A, assuming B has already occurred, is the same thing as saying the probability of A and B all over the probability of B. And some people just define this as the definition of conditional probability from the start to avoid any motivation of the idea. So let us put this actual definition to work. So for this definition, A and B are coming from the same big sample space. All right, so what do we have here? So example. Suppose that it is found that the likelihood of it raining is the probability of R is equal to 7 divided by 15. If it rains, there is a likelihood of it flooding. in a particular region of a city. So before I actually state what that likelihood is actually equal to, let us sort of explore what is going on here. So flooding, I'm going to call it F, depends on raining. R. So flooding depends on R. There, because if it doesn't rain, then it's impossible to flood under standard conditions we're assuming, right? So that means this will be a conditional probability. So if it's a conditional probability, that means I need to give us some, you know, uh, conditions. So let us assume that it's rain, and I found out that, you know, that out of 11 times that it's rained, maybe the probability that it floods, assuming that it's rained, is equal to about 8 out of 11 times. Let's assume that's gathered by uh, experimentation. So what type of things may we ask? So question. What is the likelihood of it raining and the region flooding.
So I'm asking, what is the probability of R and F? Mathematically, that's what I'm asking here. All right, so how are we going to solve this? So solution. So we've given that the probability of it raining has been found to be equal to 7 divided by 15. And we've already established that raining and flooding are dependent on one another. So the probability of it flooding, assuming that it is raining, is found to be equal to 8 divided by 11. And we're looking for the probability of R intersection F. So is there a formula that we know that relates these three quantities? The answer is yes, because we know that the probability of F given R is equal to the probability of F and R divided by the probability of R. And, of course, note that probability of R and F and F and R are the same exact events, right? So that means what? So the probability of F or given R is equal to 8 over 11. So the 8 over 11 must be equal to the probability of F and R divided by the probability of R, so 7 divided by 15. So we're going to cross multiply here so we can solve for that. So multiply both sides of over 15. So then we're going to have the probability of F and R is equal to 8 by 11 multiplied by 7 divided by 15. So that'd be 56 divided by 165 or approximately equal to 0 0.3394. So what does that mean? That means on any given day, given day, there is about a, let's say, the 4% chance of it raining and then flooding the city. So that's the conclusion. So, summary. So this pretty much is talking about the dependence of events. So, if A depends on B, then the probability of A, assuming B has already occurred, is equal to the probability of A and B occurring divided by the probability of and please note here that B must not be equal to zero because A depends on B. So if B never occurs, then of course, well, if A depends on B occurring, that means A won't occur either, right? So of course, that's an obvious restriction to this property. But this is the general definition of a conditional probability. In the next video, we'll explore this in a little bit more detail.